Blessings and honor, glory and power forever to our God. Praise ye the name of the Lord Most High. Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The president of Ethiopia recently died. This is not good news for Christianity in the country of Ethiopia. Throughout history, what is now known as Ethiopia has changed. What I mean by that is some saw all of Africa as being Ethiopia and even the Atlantic Ocean was at times and by some called the Ethiopian Sea. Some looked at it as only being the eastern coast of Africa. Um, some look at it as being as ancient Sheba, though the land of Sheba extended from my understanding from Eastern Africa through Saudi Arabia and even Western India. Um, what is now known as Ethiopia, the, this, that specific land I believe has always been a part of what is called Ethiopia and of course God knows the end from the beginning so when he was speaking of Ethiopia he would have obviously been speaking of the country of Ethiopia. This is something that um, in times past I did not focus on that aspect of it due to the fact that I know that the Lord had been speaking to me about Sudan and I know that parts of Kenya as well as the country of Sudan were um, at times a part of what would have been known as Ethiopia and so of course the wars and the things that have been going on in the Sudan the last couple of years took place and so um, <laughs> my confirmations are always the fulfillment of what it is that I say that God has said in some cases um, there are other confirmations of course. In any case, um, I do know that um, some like Perry Stone were very stern that um, when speaking of Ethiopia, he was speaking of the country of Ethiopia and I believe that he shared some of his insight on the subject and so I'm just making this video to say what it is that I've already said which is that Christianity in Ethiopia is in danger. Um, Ethiopia became a Jewish country um, because of the Queen of Sheba and then there was Queen Candace which I believe was Candace was more so of a title than a um, name and I'm in they probably pronounced the, you know the title their name differently um, when the Ethiopian eunuch which is spoken of in the Bible went back to her he um, with the revelation of Jesus Christ they became a Christian country they have one of the world's oldest churches the Romans the Europeans came to Africa assuming that you know these black people wouldn't know Christianity and so they came trying to bring Catholicism and was basically kicked out <laughs> I mean, the Ethiopians were just like please this is Paganism? Are you serious? Like we don't know paganism in Africa? Are you serious? In, in your Christianity, they were like, no, no, we have Bibles, and our Bibles don't have any books removed. The Book of Enoch is in their Bibles, and so you'll see that as um, Ethiopian people, they tend not to marry outside of their, um, you know, not only their race but their culture, their countrymen. They don't, you know, take lightly to that. They have a very strict and very specific culture that they um, usually adhere to and some of that is because of even though they're Christians most of Christianity is not in accordance with um, the way they do things in Ethiopia which is more according to um, the ancient paths spoken of in the Bible and not all of this fluff and filth that we've added and you know so um, it's pretty much been a Christian country and then there were times when things went on and um, Eritrea broke off from you know Ethiopia and became its own country etc. I don't know all of the history. Um, Rastafarianism of course started because of King Haile Selassie who was said to be the descendants of the Queen of Sheba and King Solomon. I believe this to be the case. Um, if he's not the descendant of King Solomon I, he's probably the descendant of, of the Levites who um, escaped into Africa and settled in that part of Africa. In any case, because of this, you know, him being a son of David, they many see him as being the son of David and so they believe that he is the Messiah and he was ousted or whatever have you and they believe he's coming back and all of these sort of things and 
of course, even within um, the Rastafarian community, there may be those who don't necessarily believe that. Um, so as of right now, with the, with the president of Ethiopia being dead, you can pretty much expect the Muslim Brotherhood or something similar to further take control. It will not be very difficult. All you got to do is travel south from Egypt or a little west, you know, a little further east from um, Sudan. Of course, you got Somalia. And all of those countries surrounding Ethiopia are mostly Islamic. And if I'm not mistaken, I do believe it was Perry Stone who spoke about, you know, Islam being on the rise in Ethiopia, which makes sense because a lot of the Ethiopians have moved. Um, there's a, a model, a supermodel, or well, a model who is in Russia who's part Ethiopian, and there's many Ethiopians in America. Um, for those of you who know the rapper Lola Monroe, she is from here um, in Washington, D.C., and she's Ethiopian. Um, and there's many of them here in this community. Some of you may know the singer Zodi from right here on YouTube. She's Ethiopian and Eritrean. And I actually think that Lola Monroe is part Trinidadian. But in any case, lots of them have left the land and are right here in America and in other places in Europe, etc. You know, um, Leah Kabede, them, she's definitely Ethiopian and is a um, supermodel. I'm not sure if she's still modeling these days. Um, so most of those people that are here tend to be Christian or just sort of, you know, don't really discuss religion too much. Um, they're very intelligent people, very, very beautiful people, um, extremely beautiful and intelligent, actually, but um, and well-dressed and well-cultured, and I really can't find too much, um, if anything, to say <laughs> negatively about the Ethiopians. Um, I'm very fond of them myself. In any case, it's not going to look good um, for Christians in Ethiopia. As it says right here in Ezekiel 38 and verse 5, Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet. And this, of course, is Ezekiel 38, which speaks of um, Gog and Magog and all of those things. So, <laughs> all systems go. The final battle is upon us. Preparation time is over. We are now in the war zone. Get Jesus and get him good.